Wow. I don't know what the heck's going on with that. I think Bill put the curse on it earlier. Man, it ran great through the uh, pre-program, but sorry about that, everybody. Uh, anyhow, welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred and Friends. And I got to tell you, I got some great, great people on here tonight. It's uh, I, I, I've been waiting for this. Uh, hey, good evening, Robert Hansen. Uh, I've been waiting for this, man. Um, I, I've got a few things to mention, but you know, tonight, I'm having Mean Gene on. Mean Gene is uh, one of the guys that plays on the band with me, um, a, a terrific person from down in Chino, California. And then, obviously, I have Mr. William Bailey. He's my co-host. Uh, Mr. Bud Orr, how you doing, pal? Mr. Bud Orr watching right now. And then I'm going to have, guys, the Hellhounds on. Now, this is a group that um, I had the privilege of, of playing against and meeting uh, back in New York. And you're going to love these guys. I mean, um, that, that's the reason that they're on the show tonight. These guys are absolutely a terrific, terrific bunch of guys. And uh, I am very, very excited to have these guys on. Um, yeah, Bud, you remember them guys. They were pretty cool. Absolutely. So, you know, maybe we can get Bud to call in later on and say hi to him after we pull him up there. But you know what? I, I There's a few things I want to mention before we get this thing going. Obviously, I'm wearing my Herman shirt tonight, Okay. Now, the Hermans is is uh, a kid's group. I believe um, they're like from seven years old to uh, 14 years old. And, uh, you know, I push real hard. Hey, Step in Snow, good evening to you, pal. Now, I push real hard the kids, you know, because we need to bring the kids up and and, and keep our sport growing. Our sport's going real good right now. You know, I, we're, we're actually on a roll. And uh, what we need to do is we need to keep everything moving. Now, a group I'm having on tonight, the Hellhounds, um, these guys are in their 20s and or so. But, you know, you're going to love these guys. These guys are terrific. And the Hermans, the, the kids groups that I'm pushing, is, uh, you know, they're from 7 to 14 years old. And now there's a lot of kids groups coming out. And what we need to do is we need to stand behind these kids, okay? Um, you know, I, I'm going to stand behind all of them. I know Jennifer Montressor. She has uh, her young guns that, that she's sponsoring. And, um, you know, they're going to be actually at a, a tournament, uh, the Iron City Classic, and it's going to be the 30th of July. And so, you know, even if you guys aren't going to play, get out there and support Jennifer's kids and, and all the kids that are, are learning in this sport. Because one thing we want to do is we want to keep the sport rolling. And these kids are the ones that are going to do it, Okay. Now, real quick, um, you know, I got a few things I want to mention tonight before I, I bring my guests on. But the the Hermans, okay, they they've got a thing coming up here right now, and it's a calendar thing, and you can buy spots. It's like twenty dollars for a spot, or or you can buy three spots for like fifty dollars. And um, I'm not totally sure exactly how it works, but I know next week I'm going to have a representative from the Hermans on so that we can sit down and, and go over all of this uh, with them. Because I got to tell you, you know, um, I support these kids. And uh, Mark Gong, um, you can also contact Mark Gong. Now, Mark used to play in concert pursuit with me, and he has his two sons, uh, uh, Jalen and Mark Jr., play right now. These kids are screaming. Oh, my God. I, I, and these kids are seven and eight years old. You know what I mean? It, it just... It just blows me away how good that they are really, really getting. And, you know, if we all collectively work together to support all these kids, it's going to only make paintball grow that much more. And, you know, when we finally check out, we're going to know that we actually helped not only promote paintball at the beginning, but help to keep it going with the younger generation. So I, I'm really uh, looking forward to all of you guys uh, supporting them and, and Tune in next week or get a hold of Mark Gong Jr. or get on the Herman's Facebook page. I guess they have a page on Facebook and it'll tell you a little bit about, you know, how all of this works. Um, and, you know, $20 to help a team uh, of, of youngsters like that, you know, it's it's $20 well spent. And you can really look back at this sometime in the future and go, you know what? I actually help those kids do what they're doing now because in years to come these kids are going to be great and hopefully they will carry on the sport of paintball like we brought it up to this point hopefully they will carry it on from here on in and uh i just uh i gotta tell you 
you want to check it out, especially next week. Uh, we're going to have a representative from the Hermans. So, or get a hold of Mark Gong. Mark Gong would love to hear from you. Um, very articulate, very smart person. He will uh, tell you exactly what the heck is going on. And I, I just love it. I just I hope all you people will jump in and start helping these young kids, guys, because it's, it's a big thing. It really, really is. And uh, I got a few things I'm going to mention when, when I pull the hellhounds up here. And uh, it's pretty cool. You know, uh, we got Francis uh, from the hellhounds. He's, uh, I guess he's your mouthpiece. I guess. I guess I guess Francis is the talker. He's kind of like me, you know. I, me, my tongue's like tied in the middle and flaps on both ends. So when I get on a roll, I'm on a roll. And then we're going to have a uh, Mean Gene on tonight. You know, everybody knows Mean Gene, and I actually had the privilege, and I, I mean privilege, of getting to hang out with this guy in New York and playing alongside of him uh, a few weeks ago at Woods Bowl World Cup, um, which is is still in my mind like you cannot believe it, it it was one of the best times in paintball that i've ever had i got i got to see a lot of my old friends and and then uh, the new friends and uh it's just going to be great it really is and tonight i was going to have uh, ian jacobs on and he is a new pbsl guy in new hampshire unfortunately he couldn't make it at the last minute tonight so what we're going to do is we're going to set up another time with him. I'm going to bring on him. I'm going to bring on Sam Wyrick, which is the local guy around here for the PBSL. And I'm going to bring in the guy that actually got this thing all fired up from Southern California. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a special show um, on the PBSL because I think it's a, just a great, great thing. And uh, it's something else I want to push. Like I, like I want to push the kids stuff too. And so anyhow... Real quick, um, let me let me real quick here before I give my shout outs. Let me bring up my co-host, Mr. William Bailey. Yeah, I seen you chewing. I had to bring you up, baby. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 little Freddie, I got you. I absolutely love it. So you know, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to go to Hell Survivors, and that's um, in Michigan in July 24th and 25th. And yep. you're going to D-Day. Now D-Day is another huge thing, right? Oh yeah. Yep, used to be the world's largest game, but uh, this time there will be probably 1,500 to 2,000 players. Yeah, that's enough to call it It'll a good-sized game. Yeah, We're gonna, I'm going to set up when, a museum there. When is it and where is it? Uh, it's it's uh, 7th through the 12th of June, and well, 7th through the 13th, and uh, it's at Oklahoma D-Day Adventure Park in uh, Wyandotte, Oklahoma. Wow, that thing runs a whole week, huh? Yep. They'll have mini games going on. There'll be vendors there. Uh, there's a gambling casino right down the road. Oh, there you go. We've got to have that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't ever see it. I stay in the I stay in the building, sir. Oh, right on. Hey, Thomas Gee. Thomas was on our show last week uh, and he also plays on the band. Uh oh, yeah. terrific guy. Pulled the flag um in our game uh he he's just a, a great great person and i'm very glad he's chiming in tonight along with chris denny you know i got to mention these people because you know these people are uh they're pretty special to me you know they they chime in they watch the show most of them watch it every week and uh you know we can't thank them enough right billy mm, nope yeah, they're all good guys yeah absolutely and right what's that i said they're good guys and girls yeah, I'm glad you said that too. And now, now I won't get any hate mail. That's pretty cool. You know, actually, you know, coming up here, guys, in a, in a couple of weeks, we're having another girls' night. And uh, the last one we had was it was outstanding. Um, you know, we had on Tracy Perez and and B Young and um, you had Tammy on. Uh, so it was uh, it was pretty cool. And uh, Bobby from up. North is saying hi from Canada. How you doing, Bobby? Yeah. He does. He is, yeah, he said he said he said you definitely need to do a video of the museum, Bill, so you can get it online. Oh yeah, we will. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well I'm gonna hold you to that now. So you well, set it on air. Video, so whenever we were at uh the Indiana Super Game last year, there's about a minute and a half video that is online. Well, a minute and, and a half, that ain't nothing. Yeah. Uh, Make it five minutes. I, it was just a walk that long. Through. Holy cow, five <laughs> minutes. I'll have to get sponsors and stuff for that. 
Now <laughs> you're killing me. So real quick, and I, I got to give my shout outs real quick as I do at the beginning yeah. of every show because you know these guys are uh, these guys work really really hard for a long long time, and um, obviously they're still locked up in our country. Yeah. You know, Bobby, I can't wait for you guys to get out because you know um, the Booney Boys are are one of the the coolest teams that I've ever had the pleasure of playing alongside. You know, I, I brought five of them down. They played alongside Constant Pursuit. We went to a couple of tournaments. I won in Chicago in the World Cup. And and we've had them on the show a couple of times, Bill. You yep. know, oh, yeah. and when we have them on the show, people people go, hey, man, when are the Booney Boys going to be back on? Because you know what? These are a cool bunch of guys. And, you know, we've got another cool bunch of guys coming on here tonight, man. Hmm. we got oh, the yeah. Hellhounds coming Hellhounds. on tonight. Yeah, absolutely, you know. And you only get on this show if you do good for paintball and you're cool. Otherwise, you got to go someplace else. We'll let it go there. <laughs> <laughs> the bad so, Yeah, there you go. Uh, so anyhow, um, uh-oh, Budor says hi to Caesar and hi to Gino. So Gino and Caesar are watching. Well, you know, I'm going to mention their names in just a minute, but I'm going to start out, as I always do, with Mr. Tim Schloss from Had Tiger Stripe Camel back in the day. And uh, now we have Gateway Paintball, which Tim would say is only 10 minutes from the St. Louis airport. So, you know, yeah, I, I guess it's a hell of a field. I guess uh, Bill and, and Bud Orr went there a few months ago, and they just absolutely loved it. it, was it really, it's really only cool. 15 It's only 15 minutes away from a really good roast beef sandwich place. So he should say that instead at the airport. Oh, we're going to work on that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess you could fly in, go to the roast beef place, and then you're still only 15 minutes from the field. Yeah. Wow, yep. yeah. Hey, we're going to get a map out. Bill's, Bill's going to put a map together here as soon as he turns his phone down. And um, Rob Walker, Rob Walker gave me that shirt up there, right there, from Fox Paintball Team. I absolutely love it. So anyhow, real quick, I said hi to Tim Sloss. I got to say hi to Mr. Dan and John Colby, Immortal Air. Uh, been my buddies, been my sponsors for 30 years. Unbelievable. From, uh, yeah, we started actually in 1990, but we call it 1991 to 2021. And that's pretty cool. Um, maybe later on, uh, we'll be, get lucky and maybe Danny will call in because, uh, you know, Danny and Bud, you know, these guys thought a lot about the, the Hellhounds too. You know, the Hellhounds, uh, the guys we're going to bring up here in a little bit, these guys made a name for themselves. I don't know if they realized it or not, but they did themselves a lot of good. And, uh, You'll hear some of the stories uh, uh, about the whole thing when we bring them up. And then I got to say hi to, to Mr. Tom K. Tom K was my sponsor for many years, Air Gun Designs. Uh, and Rainy and Juby Boucher uh, had paintball news back in the day. Two times a month, these guys would put out the newspaper, never charge any, any player for the paper. You could just go to your local field and pick it up. You knew what was coming up, what had happened before, where the fields, I mean, it was like the dictionary of paintball back in the day. Um, you know that, Billy? You've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It you just, you know, in, in bundles. And you, if you're lucky, you showed up to the paintball field and they hadn't got the mail yet and you just grab one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, once they came out, they were gone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was fortunate enough. You know, I was blessed. I was a West Coast editor. So they sent me one anyhow. But, yeah, they were they were pretty hard to get. People would swoop on them because they were Heck terrific. Yeah. So, uh, anyhow, raining. Randy and Juby Boucher, terrific, terrific people. Mr. Randy Camilla, APG, gave me my very first cover shot. Uh, one of many, and I, I thank Randy so much for that. Jerry Braun, Jerry Braun had paintball sports. Uh, Jerry Braun actually owned the field uh, at the Woods Bowl World Cup we were at uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was so good to see Jerry. Jerry, he hasn't changed a bit. I mean, his demeanor is still the same. Uh, he he just, uh, he looked great same and night. sounded great. Huh? He was the same height. No, no. I think he was actually a quarter of an inch taller. I, I, I believe well, he put something on the heel of his shoes. It was those platforms. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I can think of. But, you know, we love you, Jerry. You had a great, great tournament. And, uh, you know, Kevin Donaldson uh, and the Master Blasters, what a terrific bunch of guys those guys are. They, uh, they made it happen, period. That's all there is to it. So, real quick, Ross Alexander. Uh, Ross Alexander had a line outside. If you go back, you remember the, the Bushmaster. Oh, that yeah. was a bomb back in the day. Matter of fact, I still got my original Bushmaster over here someplace. Anyhow, um, he wanted to be there 
Uh, but uh, he was reopening his business after this COVID stuff, so he couldn't be there. But I'm sure he'll be there next time. Next time. And then, yep. And then Jim Lively, um, you know, he was going to be there. His wife, Linda, had a heart attack, but I understand she's doing really, really good now. Um, we send our love out uh, from, from the whole paintball community, period, to uh, Linda Lively and to Jim, too. Jim uh, did the Masters back in the day, and he was just terrific. Uh, two things I always wanted to go to. I just looked forward to going to back in the day. And that was Jerry's World Cup, and that was Masters in Tennessee, Jim Lively's Masters. They were just the the most terrific events you could ever want to be at. They, oh, yeah. They, yeah, I mean, paintball was just so mm -hmm. cool back then, so much fun, man. So raw. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was great. And, hey, Jerry Jones is checking in here. Gary Jones has paintball press. That guy took some fantastic pictures. Him along with Josh Silverman. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so did John Amadea. Uh, these three guys, man, they covered that thing like I could not even believe. Um, some of the pictures were just, just beautiful. Uh, and, yeah, uh, Josh, Josh caught some awesome photographs. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so did John, and so, and so did uh, Gary. You know yeah. what I mean? Some of the stuff that, you know, Gary took a picture of my wife and I that uh, is one of the best pictures I, I think I've got of her and I. It was just absolutely terrific. And uh, I, I just love it. And I can't thank him enough because, you know, like I said last week, you know, when, when you do something like this and, you, and then 20 years from now, it's you have the memory. But when you try to share the memory with somebody, yeah. it's kind of hard. <laughs> but when you got a picture, you're sharing the memory. Oh, and yeah. it's, it's, it's very, very cool. Hey, and Mark Baum just posted, I believe, uh, where to get up on to check out uh, for the Hermans thing. So, uh, like I said, the Hermans, they're my, my little league team, I will call them. So, if you give these guys a hand. They're just nothing short of tricking us. And now i got to mention Gino. Gino from Belkin. You know, Gino, <laughs> what Gino does behind the scenes for everybody in this sport um it, it, most of it goes untold you know I, how many how many people did you think yep there you go that's yeah, right whatever it takes. How, yep how many how many people did you did you hear say hey gino thanks for the tents oh yeah you know those are belting tents out there that we were underneath yeah you know? you know and and he does so much stuff for people behind the scenes but he never tells anybody you know mm -hmm. and and gino doesn't pay me i'll tell everybody that right now gino's a very good friend of mine and i say this because out of the respect what he does for our sport and um belkin you know belkin uh, is, is a big operation there's no doubt about it but you know all the good fortune that gino gets gino deserves period in my book he uh he does so much for our sport i absolutely love it and then i gotta say hi always to mark long jr but jalen also jalen gone you know these are brothers mark long um sons and uh He's bringing these guys up just terrific. I got to tell you, it's, uh, I am absolutely proud of them. Proud to know them. Proud to wear their jersey. They had a jersey made for me, man. Um, it's, it's just extremely cool. And I also, yeah, Bud Orr said Gino's awesome. He, you know, Bud, you're absolutely right. Bud, you're awesome, too. You know, every week, Bud Orr. You know, Bud Orr is probably the, the biggest name in paintball. Well, maybe next to, next to Bill. Um, or maybe next to Gene. You never know. Um, but anyhow, um, you know. Oh, I didn't mean to choke you up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyhow, you know, he chimes in every week. Um, I talked to Bud yesterday for an hour and a half. He called me. The guy is funny as hell. Oh, my God. He had me cracking up. I, I, we got to get the guy to write a book. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. some of his met. I, oh, some. Well, the ones that we could talk about, you know. Yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. You know, they're, uh, they're pretty damn funny. And I got to say hi real quick to Connor Bryant. Connor Bryant's watching us from Australia right now. So you know what? I'm going to bring on real quick uh, Mr. Mean Gene. How you doing tonight, Gene? Doing good. I don't know if uh, this is going to work or not, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, you're looking good, and everything sounds good. You know, at least I if you freeze up, you freeze up with a smile. Every time I freeze up, I'm like, Right, you know, some like and Bill knows, you know, it, it just sucks, you know. But uh, I, I, I guess that's how the video gods work for me, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you see? Did you see my intro? I went through the intro twice today, make sure everything's smooth. 
work perfect. <laughs> I, I go throw it up on, when the show starts. It's eh, eh, eh. So I got to tell you, I don't know what's going on with that stuff. So, but Gene, real quick. Um, first of all, did you enjoy yourself at the World Cup? Oh, unbelievable. Uh, just the privilege alone of seeing – I mean, you guys are all people I idolize, and I got to play with you guys. It was a, uh, oh, it was a dream come true. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I got to tell you, it was a thrill meeting you, and plus, I got to hang with you. You get to ride back and forth with me every day. I thought that right? was cool as hell. Right? Yeah, yeah Bill. It's... Bill was too damn busy for me. Bill goes, "Oh, you're gonna get up early. <laughs> oh, there ain't enough room in the truck." You know, I'm like, "All right, all right." <laughs> Had to. Had to, had to deliver Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that I think that whole event should have been uh you should have had somebody follow around with a camera and there were so many stories and so much I mean I can't even explain to people when they ask me like, hey, how was it? It there's yeah. you can't you can't I, I wish it was a crew there filming the whole well, thing. It was just incredible. You know what, Gene, is I had a guy coming up, Freddie was gonna come up and do it for me, but then he fell in love. And you know what happens, you know, when, when you fall in love, everything else is out the door. So then I had uh, Kevin was supposed to try to find me a, a film crew. He couldn't find a film crew for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking a lot of the still pictures and I'm going through a lot of the the video stuff that we got that, that we put together. And I'm going to try to put together maybe a, a 45 minute to an hour documentary on it because well, something like that, uh, it just should not pass by. And, you know, just like the guys we're going to have on in a few minutes, the Hellhounds. What a great group of guys they were, you know, and, and the story yep. with, you know, with some of their guys heading out, the, uh, that just blew me away when I heard that. And these guys stood tall, came and played. You know, I would have got out there, too, just like they did. I'd have went out there by myself if that's what it would have took, period. And, you know, these guys have gained so much respect in the paintball industry in just two weeks. I, I can't tell you. I was going to try to mention everybody's name on here. That was praising these guys, but the list started getting too long. So, you know, I'd have to I'd write it down on toilet paper or something because I had to keep it on a roll, you know. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, when we bring them up, you're going to hear just exactly how cool these guys are. And Gene knows all about them. Gene got to play against them. Gene got to watch them. Um, so real quick, Gene, what do you got going on? I understand you're working on some, some new stuff right here. Yeah, I just released uh, new ball detents. They they're out there now. Um, working on some trigger plates. Ran out of trigger plates. It's just the business has been booming to the point that I'm actually now finally running out of old stock, and I'm going to have to start making product again. Yeah, stock is a big thing right now. Like I said, I talked to to Joe West from J and J Barrels the other day, and he put his order in for stock, and it's four months out. Right, Four months out for that stuff. I'm like, oh my god. So, but you yeah, know, I think it, with the, go ahead with the whole mechanical thing going on. I I can't, and the fact that the cocker is the only gun that you can personalize, make it your own. Yeah, I don't foresee it ever dying. Honestly, I think it's oh, no, going to be around forever. Hey, and I, we're going to make we're, we're going to make it grow. I do want to say thanks to Bud, because without Bud, I wouldn't be here. I would have yeah. no business. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but Bud's a, a terrific, terrific person. Uh, like I say, I talked to him yesterday for about an hour and a half. He had me cracking up, man, I got to tell you. So, but uh, anyhow, you know, I, I've talked a lot about bringing on the, the Hellhounds. And so, you know what, I think it's time that we bring these guys on. Um, I want the whole people industry to listen to these guys. This is what paintball is and should be all about. These guys, um, they handle themselves great on the field, but off the field, they handle themselves just as great. And uh, I, I think it's terrific. And I'm looking forward. You know, we're going back to World Cup next year. You can be there with me, right, Gene? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because I'm actually sending Bill out six months early, so I know that he's there. Um, right. So <laughs> So we're smacking more wood up on top of the bunkers. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was a little bad for us, for us big tall guys. Well, that, you know, there's a picture of you and behind that, me behind that one bunker. And we're laying down on our back yeah. shooting. 
and the bunker is still just right over yeah. us. You know? <laughs> I was having to do sit-ups, and I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> that, like that someone killed me, and then the rest kept calling me clean with a splatter. I'm like, for God's sakes, it's a hit. Take me <laughs> yeah. out of this hell. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that, too, and then you left me there alone. Yeah. <laughs> then it wasn't long. I was following you. Was it? you uh, anyhow, <laughs> so, all right, guys, you know, uh, we've talked a lot about these guys. I want to keep Gene here with us because Gene, Gene had the privilege also playing against these guys. And I want to introduce to everybody that wasn't at the Woodsball World Cup now. I want to introduce the Hellhounds. Hey, guys. How you doing this evening? Good. How are you, Fred? I'm doing great. Doing great. Um, you know what? Uh, each, each and every person that we put on here knew, uh, we hit them right, right off the bat with, how did you get started in paintball? So, Francis, you're up the bat, number one. <laughs> um, so, I started playing when I was 14 up at War Club Paintball up in Rome, New York. It was my friend's birthday party, and um, he asked for us to come down. His dad was a was a military man, so he thought it'd be a good thing, you know, for all the kids to do. And right away, it was just hooked from there. Went home. You know, convinced my mom to let me buy my first paintball marker, which was, you know, the, the $60 JT Outcast. And, you know, from there, I was going as much as possible. So that's very cool. Very 10 cool. years now. 10 years. So you kept yep, 24. That's pretty cool, man. Hey, you know, uh, Gary Jones uh, from the Paintball Press just said, hello, hell owns. <laughs> you know, you guys, you guys really garnered a lot of, lot of respect. Um, for the way you guys handled yourself, not just on the field, but off the field, too. And uh, like I say, I was going to go ahead and uh, I was going to list everybody that that was was chiming in, but it got a little ridiculous. It really did. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to a couple of guys um, that actually helped you play. Um, these guys were pretty cool. Uh, they, they came on. Uh, Travis, I'm probably going to butcher his name, so get ready for Bill to laugh at me. Uh, Travis DeLayer. I guess he helped you guys out the second day. And yep. I, I guess um, uh, Mr. Robert Rum, Rumrill, I guess he had, his two sons gave you guys a hand also. Yeah, they, they were great. You know, they, they, they were, I believe they were 12, yeah, 12 and 14. Yep. And, you know, they, they played lights out. You know, you couldn't have told them from, you know, from an adult playing. You know, they did great. And they're they're going to be amazing players when they grow up for sure. Well, you guys were pretty good yourself, you know. Hey, everybody out there, what we're talking about here is after the first day, half the team not not half the team, but three of the team left, and so they took the equipment for two of the guys that stayed with the with the five guys. That these guys, instead of bowing out and uh, and leaving, and we're not going to mention any of the guys at left's name because I have no time for people like that. So I don't want to give them any publicity whatsoever. Um, but we're going to talk about the guys that stayed and, and stayed and played, period. Because I would have took my lumps by myself before I would have walked away from anything like that, period. And, you know, just like the band, you know, other than Tim Schloss. Tim thought we were going to go there and win it, you know. <laughs> you know, and I, I kept telling him, you know, Tim, you know, you're not in Kansas. Wake up, buddy. You know, but anyhow, it. He, he did, didn't he? Bill knows. Oh, we're going to win this one. We're going to win. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to win. We could have. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we went there. I, at least personally, I went there, not with the fact that I was going to go there and kick everybody's butt and take the big trophy and run home. I didn't go there at all with that in my mind. I went there to have a good time with a bunch of great people and, and just have fun playing. And that's exactly what I did. And that's what I seen from you guys, too. You guys, uh oh. I was talking about Tim Schloss. Um, Tim Schloss, he owns Tiger Stripe Camouflage. <laughs> What's going on, Tim? Hey, we should have won. What are you talking about? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> if, 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 if you weren't so worn out from giving all the interviews and getting all the picture taken and the autograph, you wouldn't have been able to take us on to victory. <laughs> I love you, buddy. So what are you up to tonight? Other than watching uh, the show. Oh, yeah, I'm watching it. Hey, I just want 
me and, I just wanted to thank me and Gene for breakfast. We all went up to pay the bill on Monday, and they said that he took care of the bill for us. I thought they yeah. were awful nice of him, so tell him I appreciate it. And, well, was, uh, well, that's and, funny. I went in there afterwards, and somebody said everybody dined in Dash. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they said, they said the guy paid the bill. So anyway, but uh, no, hey, those guys, the Hellhounds are a great team, man. Those guys came up to our tent. One of the kids on the team come up and said, you guys just kicked our ass, and I want your, I want your autograph. I said, well, I wasn't on the field for that game. because I don't care. You're part of this, but sign my gun box. <laughs> Yeah, they, you know, that's why I had him on tonight, Tim, and, and I'm glad you called in to uh, to tell him what you thought, because... No, they're a great bunch of guys. I, if they ever need an extra, I'll play for them anytime. Well, I think they're looking for players, but anyhow... <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. That was a good one. Hey, you know what? I can sit there and I got to... Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be afraid to get around you now. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. I said, you know, I, I can't miss this one. Yeah, hey, you know, I'm so glad that you, you called in and, and told these guys what you thought about them because no, you you should see all the nice. you should see all the responses, Timmy, that I, that I got from people. I was going to start writing them down, but it, it became so much I just couldn't do it. No, well, let me tell you, you know, that's that's what that's the direction that we got to go. We got to have people that are having fun and you know. Just, just out there to have a good time, and hey, you win, you win, you lose, you lose. You're not going to pay your mortgage off of this sport. There you go, absolutely. And boy, we had a time, didn't we? Oh, it's, it's, I, I, I can't tell you. I mean, it's just, it's, it's hard to put in words. I mean, it's been what two, three weeks now. Yep. Two weeks. I'm still buzzed about. It. I played paintball Sunday for three games. Just you know, I, a, I left the office. I said, here, watch it for me. I'm going to go out and play. I had a great time. Shut my auto cocker. But everybody, you know, just, just had a great time. Well, I got to tell you, I started missing you the minute that we said goodbye. Yeah, so, well, it feels <laughs> mutual, you know. It, it just, uh, it was so good to see everybody. Hell, I, hell, I, we hadn't seen each other in 20 years. I know it. And you and I traveled the world together to start oh, with. I know. I know. I got pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> better, better hide some of them. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll tell you, you're the greatest. You're the greatest. Right on, brother. Hey, I'll let you get back to the show, but I That's just, uh, you know. Tell those guys to stick with it, man. They're, they're a great yeah, bunch of guys, and I just I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed playing. Well, I didn't play against them. You guys did. That was one of the games I set out, but it was sure fun watching them. They, you know, they put up a pretty good fight up until about about four minutes left. That damn good fight, and you know what? They yeah. they were they were playing with five guys just giving them a hand. I know. I honestly, God, I thought they were going to beat us for a while because when they took Caesar out, I mean, I said, oh man, we just lost the side. Yeah. And then, you guys just kept mowing, so I mean, you know, they're they're you know they're a great bunch of players. Yeah, and I'm sure they appreciated everything you just said too. I'm so glad you well, called man, in and I'm said that. I said, man. Right on. All right, Jimmy. Well, tell Terry we'll I said you. hi. I'm gonna do it, Freddie. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, love you, brother. Bye. All right. All right, everybody. That was Mr. Tim Schloss, uh, Tiger Strike Camouflage. You see what I'm talking about? Hmm. Yeah. Huh? See that? That's what you guys. That's what you guys earned there. Uh, you earn so much respect, it's not even funny. Who's to your left, Francis? Uh, my left, this is TJ. TJ? How you doing? All right, TJ. Now, we want to hear from you. How would you get started in paintball? Um, I got started, actually. I started working at a company with his dad. And his dad was like, oh, man, you look like a big guy. Want to play paintball? <laughs> and I went, sure. I showed up one day on the field, and they said, well, here's a marker. Uh, go out there and uh, run in circles. <laughs> Don't matter. Doesn't matter how many times you get hit. You'll be all right. No, the problem was we couldn't hit him because he was making us laugh too hard the first twenty minutes. I'm like, yeah, we couldn't breathe. But so uh, you know, him and his cousin. Mm. Worst. That's why I like playing deal. with Bailey. You know, Bill's bigger than I am, man. So I stayed behind him. Yeah. Uh, although the bunkers they were too not. short for both of us. <laughs> Stay behind. I, what am I ever behind you? You're behind me. I know. Depends on which way you look at it. So, so then, then once you got started, what was the first marker you had, TJ? Uh, my first marker I had was the um, uh, shoot. What is it? The uh, hurricane. Uh, no, not the hurricane. Bolts. Bolts. Tacomo bolt. Oh, is that right? Yep, I what, got the Tacomo bolt. 
And what are you guys shooting now? Uh, now I still have the Tacoma bolt for scenarios. It's my MagFed marker, but I also have. Uh, I just bought the Emac. Oh, good. How about you, Francis? I didn't even ask you what you're shooting. Uh, it depends. I have a lot. Lots <laughs> <laughs> of things that he's not shooting. Yeah, that's probably so. Um, no, my for Woods Bowl World Cup, I used an Emac. Um, mm -hmm. but my favorite is the old school JT Impulse. Oh, right. And on. whenever I get to use that, that's that's my choice. And the guys get a little nervous when that comes out. Yeah, so. when that comes out, we know he's not playing fair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're up now. You tell us how you got into paintball. So I actually started working with Frank. What was it? Almost three years ago now? Yeah. Almost three years ago. And we worked together for a couple months. And one day, it was in March after Stalingrad, the uh, large event in March. And I just see him come into work, and he looks like he got the crap beat out of him. I'm looking at him. I'm like, you good? And he was like, yeah, this is just painful. And I was like, that looks like fun. And I went to practice a couple of months later once the weather warmed up. Got the crap beat out of me. But I had a great time doing it, and I just kind of stuck around ever since, even though we don't even work together anymore. Yeah. Well, what what made you guys form a team? So the team was formed um, six, about six years ago. Yeah, six years. It was 2015. Um, it was just, you know, me and my family and just some close friends <laughs> who, you know, we I had gotten uh, my older brother, my dad, um, into it. They're still playing to this day and a few other friends along the way, uh, most of which, you know, have stopped playing since, you know, because life happens. Yeah. And um, we were, we have come across some players that we thought were really, really good players because they had all the fancy gear. They had, you know, all the padded armor and everything. So we, we couldn't get them out because we were using rec paint with rec markers and, you know, we thought like we, we could get to that level. And then by the end of the day, we were actually starting to beat those guys. And they were using RS shockers and everything against our JT tax and outcasts and 98 customs. And after that started becoming a thing, we're like, let's let's do this. You know, let's let's go to these big games as a team and see how good we can do. And, you know, it was surprising the you know, we were we performed well the first couple of years and, you know, just ran with it ever since. Yeah, you guys did good at the World Cup. You're going to be at the World Cup next year? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I don't think the guys would let me not have us go. No. <laughs> outstanding. You know, like I say, you guys uh, you guys made a name for yourself, you know. Um, I'm sure a lot of people didn't know about the Hellhounds before, but a lot of people know about the Hellhounds now. Yeah. If Matt Beck Budor says the Hellhounds, are a great bunch of guys on and off the field. And I'm sure you guys know who Bud Orr is. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, Mr. War Game Products himself. Uh, I'd show you my autococker, but uh, it's in the mail someplace. Um, I, oh, Bill, I didn't mean to say that. I forgot you were on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, here it is right here. <laughs> I, up, I upgraded you. Yeah, you did, huh? Oh, here we go. He's, he he, he fixed my autococker, and he said he sent it out. Oh, there you go. This is wow. A, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Looks like a, yeah. That, that <laughs> Nella, you, you've heard of him. Yeah, that would look like it come off the Mayflower. <laughs> this was, this was a, 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 a one of the props from a TV show called V Wars. Oh, that's right. That was on the television show, huh? Yeah, and uh, they That's they sold right. them, and uh, he got them all for me. So Neb uh, Nilla did that, didn't he, up in uh, Canada? Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. yep. Yeah. Neb watches a show every week. He's a terrific guy. Him and Jeff Thompson, one of the Booney Boys. Uh, Jeff's on there right now. Can't wait to play these guys next year. Ah, you see that? The Booney Boys. Uh, you're gonna love these guys. The Booney Boys are like the Hellhounds. I mean, you guys got the same disposition. You're. You're going to meet these guys, and you're going to like them instantly. Just like everybody that met you guys liked you guys instantly, too. It, it was just uh, very, very cool. And, Gene, real quick, you played the game yes, against sir. them, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, That game, me and Rainey, 
walked that low side back there on the field. Yeah. And we made a pat. We were going to whoop some ass. So <laughs> it was uh, it was interesting. It was fun. It, How we long actually, before you were out? I went out before Rainy, but <laughs> we actually figured that field out. And it was the uh, – it was uh, – <laughs> I wish we would have played that field another <laughs> day after that. Yeah. Well, you know, I ran up the middle, and I ran up the middle, and I went behind the first bunker, and I tripped and fell. I had about two inches of dirt in the end of my barrel, and I thought, well, that's going to be game over for me. Two shots, and I blew it right out. I couldn't nice. believe it. Yeah, and, and I was up rocking again then, man. So I was going to pull that flag, too, because I was the first one up there, and Thomas was to my right. And I looked you at that flag, and, and I, I, know, I, I look back, and I go, pull the flag, pull the flag, because <laughs> I didn't want to run well, it all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Bill were sitting there when he uh, went to hang the flag, and that was a uh, an interesting scene. <laughs> he, he crawled up to it. I know. I said, you know, they got a picture of me standing facing the other way, shooting at the last <laughs> guy down there while Tom's getting the flag and running back with it. And then the I, next picture I see, he's crawling up the hill. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> he he said and he all ran the down. Refs, the <laughs> all the rest yeah. were, you know, who. Go go go! Ten seconds, <laughs> and it was uh, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. He, he said he ran down to the middle of the field, and there was a couple of guys on our team from the middle of the field. And he said he looked around, but he says everybody looked at him. They looked at the flag and turned their back on him. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> nobody wanted to run it back. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. What a great group of guys. Hey, yeah. you, you see what you guys got in the store for you in years to come? <laughs> oh, it's already started. Trust me, it, it's, it's already started. <laughs> yeah, you guys do scenario games too, am I right? Yeah, that's what the mainly what we've been doing. The World Woods Ball World Cup was our first like official tournament as a oh, team. Wow, wow, what a way to break in! <laughs> oh, man, that's like jumping from the pan to the fire. Wow, very cool. So what's some of your favorite you, – you do a lot of the scenario games up in your area, or do you travel at all for them? Uh, we do We do them across – so we played at Capital Combat Zone uh, in Troy, New York, which is just outside of where we live. We're in Albany, New York right now. Um, we play all three of the big scenarios at Skirmish, you know, Stalingrad, Invasion Normandy, Battle of Berlin. So we play right. all three of those. Um, we're planning on going down to Maryland to play at OXCC. Um, just basically that this whole Northeastern area, um, hitting as many scenarios as possible. Basically, wow. we can drive to in a day is fair game. Pretty much okay. it. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, you got three of you guys on here tonight. There was five of you guys, uh, in the picture that I, I posted online, which I mm -hmm. finally found the picture, which is really cool. Um, but anyhow, um, are you five guys are going to stay together now and build on that team? Is that how it's Yeah, so the team, is, the team is actually more than just the, those five guys. Um, oh, okay. Brendan was not able to make it. <clears throat> he is my, I guess you could say like my pit crew, my pit coach. Right. He, he, he you know, runs the board, helps me plan and strategize for all that. Then mm -hmm. my older brother, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. My older brother also plays, he had to work that, um, that weekend because he had just got a brand new job, so he couldn't get time off for it. And then we've got, you know, a few other players that just couldn't make it to that event. That's why we had to get another team's help to right. fill out the roster for the event. But right. we've got enough players to do it ourselves. Like I say, it's just a matter of, of life getting in the very way. Cool. No, very, very cool. Yeah, so, so Brendan's the one that didn't make it tonight then, right? No, Brendan's right here. Damien... Oh. Um, Damien couldn't make it. Okay. Yeah, Damien was there at the event. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he fell asleep. He had he had to be up at like four fifteen this morning because he oh, works wow. at six a.m. Oh, so wow. we're pretty yeah. sure he just accidentally fell asleep. So we'll, no we'll, we'll get well, for it later. There you go. Well, you know, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad you three made it tonight. Um, Jeff Thompson, he's one of the Booney Boys. Now he's uh, up in Canada, obviously, and there's a, a big field up there called Watsega Beach. Mm -hmm. And um, he says, uh, when the border opens, the Hellhounds should come to Wasega. Big game. He said, you can drive up there in, in a day with no problem. 
Um, so I'm looking forward. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to have the owner of Wasega Beach, uh, Donna, I'm going to have her on the show here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, that would be cool as hell if they open that up and you guys get a chance to go up there. And because after this show, we're going to stay in touch. Mm. You know, this isn't a one and done type of a thing. I like you guys. We're going to we're going to hang and I'm going to try to help you guys all I can. And uh, I, I actually cannot wait uh, for Bill and and me and Gene and I to play alongside you guys. I think that would be a lot of fun and big games are the place to do it at. It's going to be great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't know much help will be. We'll probably be behind you, but uh, we will be behind you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you saw the big man on my team, my dad. He's He just turned 50 in February, and he can still move. So yeah. you, you guys played lights out when we played against you, so I'm sure you still got a couple points left in you. Yeah, yeah. Just a, <laughs> the you battery is running low. But... Everybody's behind you. <laughs> The only guy I've ever seen that willingly tries to break it to the 50 and actually succeeds without getting shot. Yeah. Well, you, you know, what's funny, too, is a lot of the teams go, they, you know, before we get on the field, they go, well, we'll see you on the 50. And I just look at him and laugh. <laughs> I go, I go, maybe I'll see you on the 20. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. But you guys were just absolutely terrific. Uh, you know, like I say, you, you garnered a lot of respect uh from everybody uh, that was there and, and and for hanging in there and doing the second day and not saying the hell with it and going home. You know, you showed your medal. Oh, that's that's right. for sure. Back to Gene. None of us would have bowed. We would have all stayed and took the whooping, period. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh -oh. We did stay and we took a whooping. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right, Most baby. Of the game we took a whooping. I still yeah. have a... Uh, Bruises from the two weeks ago from playing. <laughs> this is Mr. Dan Colby. Danny, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Freddie. Okay, man. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, this is Mr. Dan Colby, uh, owner of Immortal Air, right here on the phone. Uh, hey, you know, we're talking to the Hellhounds. Uh, you're watching the show, right? Yeah, I was, man. Those guys are really good guys, you know. Uh, you know, real quick, they were really good guys on the field, you know. And now off the field too, you know, a few people could get on that game and, and play a game, and, and they could earn respect by a lot of different ways. These guys earned their respect because they adapted and overcame the situation. It's a true baller, and, and at the end of the game, they might have lost by a point or so, but they gained everybody's respect. And I guess sometimes to me, respect is more important than play on the board. Yep. So, uh, yep. So those guys are stand up good guys, you know. And uh, I look forward to hanging with those guys next year. You know what I mean? I and uh, see what's going on with those guys. Yeah, you're going to be there next year with us, right? Oh, I mean, seriously. You ask that question. No, hey, hey. <laughs> some, some, <laughs> so, somebody, just t somebody just put on online here, Dan the Man. So is Mary on, online? She has to be if somebody said that. <laughs> no, Danny, you got so much respect. It isn't even funny, buddy. You know, real quick, everybody, uh, I'm going to tell the Hellhounds this, too, real quick. Um, hey, and Keith Kissel, what's going on, buddy? Uh, real quick, we have a guy um, that we've known, his name is Steve Davidson. And anyhow, he helped uh, start paintball way back in the day. He was flying home from his mother's, and he landed in Chicago to change planes, and he had a heart attack at the airport. So they took him to the, the hospital. And he had, uh, what do you have, Danny, a triple bypass? Yeah, a triple bypass. Yeah, triple, yeah, I'm breaking into the tongue. Uh, but anyhow, he had a, a triple bypass. And uh, so he was in the hospital for 10 days. And the guy lives in, in what, Massachusetts? Yeah, yeah, I can't say that. We're Massachusetts. Good, good enough for me, yeah. He yeah, lives on yeah. the East Coast. And, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so anyhow, Danny took and drove him from Chicago all the way to Massachusetts and then took a flight back. So if that isn't uh, like my my friend uh, Tracy Prezzo, he says, paintball strong, nothing is. So that's the kind of guy that just told you that he had a lot of respect for you, okay? There is nothing but total respect for this guy to take and drive 1,100 miles with somebody. And you had to stop, what, every hour and a half or something, huh? And that was... And that was every right. Hours, about 20 minutes, so he could make sure he doesn't get any, you know, walk around, get the blood moving, so he don't get no 
book class. Yeah. That, and that, that was, was right after riding with me from New York back to Chicago. Yeah, that's right, too. Yeah, that's right. Bill, Bill just said that was after riding with him from there all the way back to Chicago. <laughs> then you take off and go from Chicago back to Massachusetts. Wow. You're the man, Danny. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks, buddy. But, uh, yeah, it all worked out okay. So uh, everything's good. But, uh, so it's hell out. Good group of guys. I think there will be something in the future, like you said before. I think you guys got to look out for those guys because there'll be something, you know, they hang in for it, they hang on to it. It would be extraordinary. Oh, yeah. Got the heart. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to keep them close like this. So next time we play them, they'll, they'll probably kick our butt, but not real bad. They'll be kind to us, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I'm trying to work on the for the future thing here, baby. <laughs> good man, good man. Long, man. <laughs> yeah, put a good word for us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But they got to come out. They got to come out. You know, they owe, owe it to themselves and make sure they get out there and do it again. In you know, order to feel like that is a world I have played and do that and find a road to it, absolutely feel to go to. Uh, good group. To, and the, the players are great. The World Cup 2022 is going to just kill everything. There's not going to be a event that, that could be worth anything after mm -hmm. this. That's going to that's gonna be a good one. Yeah, the Hellhounds, they already said they were going to be there, so I'm going to hold them to it now. So. You got to, man. Absolutely. I, I hope you do. Yeah, I will. You know, Danny, it's very cool you called in and, and tell these guys that because, uh, you know, coming from you, is, yeah, it means an awful lot. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, I just want to listen to Gavin. You know, it's disappointing not to win. But, you know, sometimes you just walk off being proud. And those guys, those guys have everything to be proud of. You know, they're, they're men amongst men. They, you know, they, they did something. They adapted and overcame the situation. That's exactly what Paul does. I mean, I don't off the field. You gotta, you gotta be quick on your feet. These guys did that. I respect that, and I think everybody, one of us, uh, did the same thing. Respected them the same, the same way. Yep. So, uh, yep. Yeah. A couple of points ain't no big thing, but the honor and the respect will last forever. Nobody will remember the point, but they'll all remember how cool those guys were and what they did. You know. Together, so yeah, mad respect to those guys. Wow, you put that very well. God, I wish I'd have thought of that. Huge. <laughs> hey, you know, says that boys squirrel gets another one, so they say, right? Yeah, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. hey, all right, listen, man, I don't want to cut these guys off, so I just want to say, mad respect to the board to see you guys in 2022. Um, you know, you got to be at the World Cup, man, or you're just not there, you know what I mean? So, uh, look forward to you guys, man. Until that same path, and uh, you know, so I'm excited to have you out there doing your thing and going home to a little thing of Coca Krispies or a little warm chocolate and participation award. Mm -hmm. You guys, as I said, be talking guys, about the guys that love. I know who you're talking about. I'm a street kid. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Right on, Danny. Thanks a lot, Thank buddy. You. See you there. You're welcome, Freddie. Hell, I'm going to be there, man. You Thank you. He's out, man. All right, brother. Bye. All right, man. Bye. Wow, that was Mr. Dan Colby. He owns Immortal Air. So, uh, you see see what I'm talking about? Yeah, just look at the respect you guys have picked up, man. It's just uh, just excellent. So, you're going to you're gonna have, so all 10 of the guys that, that are going to be there next year, you're going to be all the Hellhounds now, right? Yeah, it's gonna be all hounds from from here on out. Right on. Um, so, are you guys going out and practicing? Are you gonna go out and practice next weekend, or have you been out practicing since the World Cup? Or? Yeah, we had we had a uh, we had a practice last Sunday or the Sunday before that. Well, you had one before Woods Bowl. Yeah, we had one before Woods Bowl World Cup, and then we had we played in one of my events uh, last Sunday, and after the event, we stayed and did did some more practice on it. Um, we've got another practice in June, and then we've got Ion coming up in July. So we've we've got a, a bit of stuff going on, you know, recent for till then, and then afterwards there's less events, so it'll be more practice till the end of the season. Right. Well, I got to tell you, um, we're looking forward to playing you guys again next year. We're looking forward to seeing you for sure at the World Cup and. Uh, 
like my friend uh, Jeff Thompson said up there in Canada, you know, if uh, the borders open up and you guys can make it up to the big game at Wasega Beach, I'll fly out there and we'll play alongside each other. And I would absolutely love it. Yeah, just let me know. Let me know what weekend it is. Yep. And, you know, if, if we get the chance to, for sure, you know, we'll, we'll make sure we can get someone there if it's possible. That sounds good. I appreciate all you guys coming on tonight. Um, you know, uh, like I say, I, I had to bring the Hellhounds on because of uh, the way you guys talked off the field. You know, uh, you guys came up and you guys were so gracious and, and you guys play hard. You know, I, like I say, any given day, you know, one team can beat another team. I don't give a hell who you are. It, mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Billy? That's, That's right. how it is. Anybody yeah. can beat anybody on a given day. <clears throat> so, you know, and look at the All-Americans won it. And and Caesar took seven of them out by himself, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what I'm saying is, uh, oh, my gosh. You guys want to say hi to Mr. Bud Orr? <laughs> What's up, Bud? He's a good guy. Hi, Fred. I just call yeah, and say hi to everybody. And, uh, how you doing? And uh, I've talked to you in uh, more than about 20 hours. Yeah, it's been 20 hours. It's been a long time. I've been missing you, man. I've been missing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I got hey, the. The Hellhounds, hell no kidding. Uh, I've talked to a lot of them. And them guys are absolutely great. Getting after a better team, and I, I appreciate him coming on tonight. That's uh, that's that's great, awesome. Why well, I, I think Bidgen. that Bitchin, yeah, there you go. That's right, California baby. That's Bitchin, you betcha. But you know, I, I I bet that they appreciate pretty much you calling in too. You know, uh, having Bud Hour call in for anything is <laughs> is pretty damn special. That's for sure. No, it's, it's hard to top Dan when you follow Dan, but Dan said it all, man. I couldn't say it any better. But uh, He was eloquent uh, tonight, wasn't he? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I mean, didn't have a bad bomb in the whole deal. Yeah, I know. It was just amazing. I, I wonder if they pre-screened himself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think his wife is sitting over there with a hatchet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mary sitting there with a baseball bat going, one time, Danny, just one time. <laughs> yeah, so so no F bombs. Love him. Love Dan. Well, we love you too, but you know uh, yeah. what you've done for people all over the years is, uh, it, you know, it just is astronomical what you've done, and it's so well appreciated. And you know, these guys here are are just such a great group of guys, and I I actually consider it an honor that you called in. To tell them, uh, uh, thank them for coming on tonight too. I thought that was really cool. Oh no, it's it, it, you know, and I'm not blowing fuck up the bike down. No, no, they are they are great. So, I just enjoy talking to them on the field. You know, I mean, they're uh, nice guys, and uh, and uh, you know, they're an inspiration for people. There you go. I mean, that's 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 a whole enchilada. I mean, she uh, they they're. They're just great. God, you and Danny coming up with all these good scenes. You guys are making me look weak here. Damn. We appreciate every word of it. No, man. <laughs> now, I'm going to be up all night now with my eyes wide open trying to write stuff down to overcome this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, uh, you know, anyway. ah, I love you, buddy. <laughs> well, I want to let you go. And uh, I know you can get to the end of the show, but tell the guys, uh, love them. They, they are great. So, you take care. I don't. I don't care what gun they shoot you. You're the man, bud. <laughs> right. I'm just glad they're playing baseball. There you uh, go. You stay hey, safe. Bye. All right. Talk to you out there. I said hi. All right, brother. Bye bye. Well, guys, that was Mr. Bud Orr, War Game Products, the maker of the auto copy. So, uh, yeah, you guys have. Uh, had some pretty cool guys calling tonight to, uh, to praise yeah. you. So now you see what I'm talking about. See? Yeah, that's that's huge. You know, all all of them and all of you. You know, you three as well. You know, I I never thought that you know that was gonna happen. Um, you know, even even right after World Cup, 
when everyone was thanking us and 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 talking to us about everything. And I know you 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 said you'd mentioned it um, the day of about having us on. But even then, that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like it's a lot of fun, but it never like sinks in until you texted me scheduling when to go on. You know that that might actually be a thing, and then you know, and then when you and I were talking last night, and you were saying all this stuff about you talked to this person or that person, and what they were saying, you know, and it all means so much. And you know, you never, you never, especially at your first event, you know, you never expect to get that kind of praise. Um, no, we just wanted to go out and play a game of paintball. Yeah, we just want to have some fun. <laughs> wow, well, uh, well, you know, guys, you know, nothing, nothing's given to you in this sport. <clears throat> Everything is earned. I don't care what anybody says, period. Mm -hmm. You have to earn the respect, and, and that's how you end up earning your notoriety. That's how you end up getting sponsors. That's how all of that stuff works. You know, the jerks, nobody wants a jerk, period. Nobody wants to play alongside of them. Nobody wants to play against them. And definitely nobody wants to sponsor them, mm -hmm. for sure. So you guys, are, you guys are on the right road. Take my word for it. And, you know, to, to have Tim Schloss, Tiger Strike Camouflage, Mr. Dan Colby, Immortal Air, and Mr. Bud Orr, War Game Products, you know, call in to congratulate all you guys for being on tonight and tell you exactly how, what they think of you and how classy you are. That's something. Take my word for it. You know, there's, there's people been in this industry for 30 years that would give their right uh, ear <laughs> um, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to uh, have that happen. I said ear, well, Bill. <laughs> were, were those two younger players were their last name rummy yes yeah i was, I was in line uh, getting air and uh it was pretty cool you know hearing them talking about stuff like that it was a i, I took a picture of them but they were just standing there i don't know if you can see it very yep. well but, yeah you can you know but, uh, actually remember the dad came over afterwards and asked yeah. if uh, i would take a picture and we got bud and you and <clears throat> We got yeah. everybody out there to take yeah. a picture with him, yeah. And it's so the dad was all he was a happy camper. And he was a real nice guy too, you know. Oh yeah. So really good. So all right, guys. Um, so you know, tonight I've had Francis, TJ, and Brendan. You know, guys, um, you guys taking the time because I know it's late 30 back there. I mean, you guys are still young, so that, that ain't nothing, you know. Uh, but uh you know, guys, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you guys coming on tonight. So I want each each one of you guys right now to, uh, you know, say goodbye to everybody and maybe leave us all with a parting thought from each one of you. Starting with you, Francis. Yeah, I know. Put you on the spot. I love it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, uh, yeah, we appreciate certainly, you know, thank you guys for everything that you did. You know, uh, playing against you guys was something that, you know, as you said, you know, most people would be would not be able to do for their entire careers in the sport. So to be able to do all this stuff for our first time, you know, it's huge. And you've already done so much for us to having us on. And, you know, I give me your advice. So thank you for everything for that. And, you know, Tim and Bud and, you know, you, Bill, and, and all of those guys, you know, thank you to all of you guys and, and all the stuff that you guys have done already you know, is, is more than anything any of us could ever ask for. So thank you seriously for all of it. Appreciate it. TJ. I got to say when I uh, first stepped down to the field, I, this is probably my eighth month playing the game. I stepped on that field. I didn't know what was going on. I've never played in a tournament setting like that. And I was, when I met everyone for uh, the first time I met you all, I was definitely, I was uh, ignorant of just like the greatness of the people I was standing in and just to know like the experience and the knowledge and just for someone who's so new to be able to meet those kind of legends and you guys and just to be able to come on and talk to you guys has been really inspirational for me myself and I know it's going to help me push forward to keep on playing the game and put out the best of my abilities and I appreciate everything you guys have done and in, uh, inviting us on and all that. Very good. Brendan. So you guys have heard I wasn't at this Woodsball World Cup, but when I came, when I called Frank that night and I heard what had happened between Saturday and Sunday, and I heard how the entire community that was there just came together and helped these five guys that are my close friends, you know, random strangers came in just throwing pods at us saying, here, here, take this, take this. Here's, you know, 
here's a squeegee, here's pots, here's paint, just whatever they could do to help. It made me, as bad as the situation could have been, it made me feel so grateful for the kind of people that we have that play this sport. And I felt so thankful for all of you guys. Then I heard that this was happening. And I just, I honestly couldn't believe how much support we had gotten just for playing the game. You know, we were willing to step out as five guys. And I heard that we pulled legends onto the field just because they, they heard that we were running low and they just said, let's go. And it was, it was truly an honor to hear about it and to be a part of this team. And we can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Well, you know, I thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. And, and I'm looking forward to doing some more stuff with you guys in the future. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, me, I plan – go ahead, Billy. Oh, I was going to say, uh, me and Gene said his phone died, and uh, but said thanks for uh, coming out, and uh, he had a great time, you know, playing against you guys up there. Oh, that's yeah. a shame, too, yeah, because I wanted to talk to him real quick before we got rid of him. Can He's I- getting theory eyed It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gene. Yeah. All right, Hellhounds. Hey, guys, um, you know, one more time, I, I just want to thank you guys so much, uh, Francis, TJ, and Brendan, for, for taking the time to come on tonight. And you guys just keep doing what you're doing. You know, don't don't change your attitude. You change your attitude, you're going to change your demeanor, and you're going to change your future. Take my word for it. Do what you're doing right now, and everything's going to work out great for you. Uh, all kinds of people watched you tonight. And uh, like I say, most of our views come in the next couple of days, uh, you know, from overseas and, and from the people on the East Coast. So you guys are going to garner an awful lot of respect, um, more than, than what you even got tonight already. So you guys stay safe, and thanks again so much for being on tonight. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Brad. You guys stay all safe. Right, guys. Hey, stay you guys safe, stay in, guys. Stay in touch with me, all right? You, you've got, you can get up and text me at any time. You know I'll answer. And vice versa, all of you guys. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. <laughs> wow, the Hellhounds. What a great group, huh? Oh, yeah. my God. I, I was so happy to have these guys on. They're cool as hell. <laughs> they're, yeah, I mean, did you see everybody was chiming in, talking about them and stuff oh, yeah. like that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's. I, like, uh, I think it was Brandon, the one that was sitting to, to our left. Uh, I like what he said about the response from, from the community as a whole, how, how everybody replied. You know. Yeah, yeah, he did. You know, that, that, that kind of sucks, you know. I mean, Brendan had something good to say. Danny had something good to say. Buddy had something good to say. Tim had something good to say. And I'm over here stuttering. You know I mean? What is going on? I'm usually the talker. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a mechanic. I'm a driver. What's happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. yeah, hey, yeah. Well, you had my back too, Billy. I loved it. Yeah, I know. I, just... <laughs> I felt that twisting motion. Yeah. <laughs> But what a great group of guys tonight, huh? It was. And uh, everybody that called in and everybody watching is an awesome show, as always. Yeah. Um, well, you're a big part of it. You know that. So, uh, Like I know. said, it takes everybody to make it all happen. So it's, it, uh, yep, it does. So I'm okay, really up. fun in this game of life. Yeah, you're right. So hang on. I'll pull you back in the green room after I uh, oh. say goodbye to everybody. All right? Okay. All right, pal. All right. All right, everybody, that was uh, Mr. William Bailey, my co-host. Uh, just a terrific, terrific guy. And, guys, what can I say about the Hellhounds? I, I am just uh, – I'm very thrilled that I actually had a chance not only to meet these guys but to sit and talk to them. And I'm also very, very happy that I got to really introduce them to, to my viewers out there that didn't even know about these guys – because they're a New York group, you know, and I'm a West Coast guy, you know, bitching. I got it. I love it. And uh, so anyhow, I just want to say to everybody out there, this is what paintball is all about. This is how you grow paintball. You know, individually, we can all do little things here and little things here. But if we work collectively all together to keep building our sport, our sport is going to just be absolutely terrific in years to come. And it's guys like the Hellhounds that are going to give us a hand. All right. So. Until next Tuesday, remember, I am going to be talking about the Hermans. I'm going to have a representative from the Hermans, youngster paintball team. you got to, got to push these guys. And uh, remember the Hellhounds. Whenever you hear that word, the Hellhounds, give them a thumbs up. Nothing but class. All right? So until next Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock Pacific time, play hard.
play safe, play fair. Get out there and play paintball. Huh? All right, everybody. I'll see you.